In today's video, I show you the Dragon's Rest Cavern set. But before we get into today's video, just want to share with you what the GGGGs are for this month. Each month, Bob the Beholder picks some of my Patreon supporters to receive gratitude gifts. And for this month of September of 2023, we have this printed and painted Hellgate from a Hell of Terrain Kickstarter. We have two pledges for a Hell of Terrain Kickstarter. And we have $100 going towards a crowdfunding campaign, which my Patreon supporters are currently voting upon. Go ahead and use the link below to go to my Patreon page where you can find out more information about how you can get in on that. It only takes a dollar to become a Patreon supporter. So many of you know that I'm a huge fan of Ian's Dragon's Rest terrain. And if you want to see my magnetized Hero Quest board, go ahead and check it out here. But I have also printed out a number of his other files, including some sci-fi ships, as well as a whole Space Hulk board. I think Ian's STLs are really, really good. And a while ago, he did come out with a cavern set, which is fairly minimal, including really just a set of walls, both on a grid as well as off. But recently, I did pre-order the Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk module. It's a reprint of the excellent Minds of Fandelver, which was part of an introductory box, an essentials box, that I've run a couple of times. And I really, really like that module a lot. It's amazingly good for being in a starter box. So when I heard that they were reprinting it and then expanding on it, I definitely wanted to get that so I did pre-order and I should be receiving my copy by the time I post this video I should have it in hand and my daughter recently asked if I could run a campaign for her and her high school friends and so this is the reason why I needed a cavern set. Now there are going to be spoilers but don't worry I will give a big warning before I do show some of the caves from uh, the Mines of Fandelver, as well as this new module. But don't worry, what you see here is just a random setup. Uh, this isn't going to spoil anything. But one of the big features about what's in the module is that there is a cave system, and, and hopefully this isn't ruining it for anybody, or it's a spoiler, but um, it's really dynamic because there is variability in height, a lot of height difference in that cave. So I needed something where I could have a ton of different levels, like you see here. And I went ahead and decided to go into Ian's files for the cavern set. But, you know, to be honest, there isn't a lot of variety. Basically, you're getting about half a dozen different STL files. And it wasn't enough for me to build out the configuration that I wanted. So I went ahead and took some of his files and went into Microsoft 3D Builder to adjust and make custom pieces. Now, for those of you who are interested in picking up these files, all you need to do is pay the $9 to become a Patreon supporter for Dragon's Rest. Go ahead and use links below in the video description if you haven't done that already. And then you can go to the files, the Dropbox that Ian stores all of the STLs into, and then go to Community Remix and look up Gaming Geek, which is all of my modded files. And then finally, the Caverns folder, and you will find all of the modded files that I have here. I requested Ian to upload that, so hopefully by the time this video posts, uh, it should all be available for you as a Patreon supporter. Now, all of Ian's files, fantasy files, uh, you're getting an awesome deal just by being a Patreon supporter. You can have access to not only the cavern set, but the dungeons, a bunch of different terrains. So make sure to check that out. Also, if you're interested in figuring out how to use Microsoft 3D Builder, become a Patreon supporter. I do have some tutorials that are Patreon exclusive, but I also did post this video of a general overview about how to mod STL files using a very simple program. So the STLs that I chose to print out are the slim floor tiles because as you can see here, when you have elevated pieces, all of them need to clip together or else they'll fall apart if you're only magnetizing. Now, I'm super big into magnets. That's my favorite way of connecting tiles together. But even here, I chose to use the clips because I needed to be able to clip these pieces into place. Otherwise, it would just fall apart when I raise them up. Also, it's really hard to get uh, five millimeter ball magnets right now. So I am trying to minimize the use of ball magnets, even though that's my favorite way of connecting my tiles. 
but by also printing out these risers. Uh, again, that is from the dungeon set, the stairs and risers. I did modify some of those files too, but by varying the different height for the risers, it gives me a ton of variability, height variability, as you can see here. And I have stairs, I have this bridge, I have a number of things that enables the heroes to go from one level to another. I have a couple of ladders here as well. Now the ladders and this bridge actually is from printable scenery. And I do have links if you wanna pick those up as well. But I'm sure you can find ladders and bridges for free on Thingiverse if you do a quick search. Also, I did wanna highlight that most of these pieces was printed on the Anchor Make M5C which recently I did a video, go ahead and check it out here, but I have been stress testing that model because it's my number one recommendation for those who are just getting into 3D printing as it is the most trouble-free automatic uh, printer that any beginner can start using as soon as they put it together, only takes about 10 minutes to put it together, and then you're up and running once you download the app. Now that is one of the caveats is you do need to either download the app or use the computer and use the software for Anchor Make in order to connect to it uh, through Wi-Fi. But still, I find that to be even more convenient than, than some of my other machines where I have to transport all of my STL files through an SD card. And thus far, I've been really happy with the Anchor Make M5C at about $400. And even recently, I've seen it as low as $350. It is definitely worth the additional cost that you would pay over a Creality Ender, which you can get it for around $200, but I think the added $150 or $200 for the Anchor Make makes it well worth it because you don't have to do any bed leveling. You don't have to fiddle around. You don't have to make an entire new hobby just to learn how to use a 3D printer. So again, definitely I think the Anchor Make M5C is one of the best beginning printers on the market today and you get a lot of good bang for your buck. And you can see here from what I printed out that the quality is as good as any other machine that's out there right now. And I have been really, really happy and I really like the fact that it prints a lot faster than my current MK3 S's. I do have a quick painting tutorial at the end of this video, so go ahead and use the timestamps if you wanna skip ahead, but this was super, super easy to paint up. All right, so here are all the pieces that I printed out. It took a number of weeks to be able to make all of the pieces. Obviously, these are all put together, so sorry I don't have a breakdown of how many pieces were printed out for each one of these, but if you flip it around on the back, you can see all of the different pieces that put this uh, room together and then these ones uh, most of these just print out as one piece and that is the mods that I made so I have a lot of corners a lot of different pre-built shapes so that it can um, configure into what really looks like random caverns because if you have right angles it doesn't really look a lot like a cavern so that's why I made um, all of these corner pieces like this that rounds it out and then these are the stock pieces from Ian. And for the most part, um, I used a number of these just for the edges. And the only corner that he had was this piece here. But um, I created a number of different ones because I used so many of these corner pieces. So I created two of uh, my own, again, using Ian's and just melding those together. All of these are the columns. Uh, this is the stock piece from the riser, stairs and riser set from Ian. And so I printed out a bunch of these. And this is the tallest height that I'm using in this dungeon, which is just two of the stock pieces clipped together. But I made a custom piece, which is this. And as you can see, it is uh, one and a half of the stock pieces as um, my height variation goes by uh, these block in increments, which is the height of stairs. As you can see here, this is the same height as these smaller blocks. Obviously, I could have just used blocks to create all these, but by using these, um, they print faster since they don't have as many indentations. And having a, stock, or having a custom piece like this, yeah, it just prints a lot faster. 
So you need a lot of these. There's a ton of these available. Oh, and these pieces are two times the height of these blocks. So that standardizes just the height variation that you can have and makes uh, building height a little bit easier and more uniform. Here are all of the wall pieces without floors. And again, this is stock from Ian's files. And I printed out two complete sets of this uh, just to be able to place on the board. And then uh, I, this bridge piece actually came from printable scenery. I think the Chlorhaven one with the uh, um, caves set that they have. Uh, I need to still paint up. These are also from Printable Scenery. I think it's the ladder set that came with the Shadow Fay Ruin set. And I custom made this by um, just basically gluing together two of these pieces, just end to end. And then here are water pieces. I just took one of Ian's uh, four pieces and just cut off the top. That way it's shorter in height than the floor pieces. And then I just spray painted it with this aqua blue and then put on top of it a really shiny varnish, spray varnish to make it shiny like that. And then I have a random assorted set of floor tiles without any walls to them so that I can fill out uh, the middle of my builds here that you see. And then the custom piece I'm most proud of that took the longest are actually these craggly pieces. There's one place in the dungeon that requires these and it took me a super long time to make this in 3D Builder. And what I decided to do is here is the room that uses the craggly pieces. So we'll go ahead and grab some of these to lift this up. And then all you do is slip these two in like this. And you can clip them into place, uh, I, I don't need to, so it basically created this craggly edge, which is in the uh, module. So that's pretty much it. Um, I'm, I'm proud of all of the pieces and how quickly I was able to paint them up. And I don't, sorry, I don't have a print list of how many of these you need to print out in order to make the Cragmaw hideout but hopefully this gives you an idea. Um, typically, I actually don't plan out my prints. I just print a bunch, and as I need, I'll print more, uh, and that's basically how it works. So now is the time to stop the video or skip ahead to the painting tutorial. If you do not want to see the first adventure or the first dungeon that is in either in the Lost Minds of Fandelver or in the upcoming Shattered Obelisk module. So go ahead and pause or turn it off or skip ahead. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you that map layout. We have Cragmaw Hideout right here in the module. And then this is my interpretation of it. I think it turned out looking super cool. Now obviously I fudged and it isn't exactly this layout, but I think it's close enough. And in fifth edition, the board doesn't have to look exactly like what's on the map. I feel like the distances isn't as critical or crucial. So let's go ahead and start here at the entrance of the cave. Uh, heroes are coming in and starting the adventure. And I have these stairs going up the different height differences. And as I mentioned before, we have all of these columns so that I have a variety of different height levels that I am able to attain so that it matches this a little bit. Now, one of the decisions that I made was here in the map, you have a stream down the side of a trail. And I didn't do it that way because it would have been difficult to do that. But my thinking is when the water is released, it just basically floods the entire tunnel here. So that's my solution to just having water up here. And I think the edges turned out looking pretty good. So that uh, section looks really cool. And then instead of sort of a refuse uh, shoot, I did go ahead and put a ladder for the heroes to be able to go up that section. One of the pieces I still need to make is sort of rubble or, or rough terrain tiles to be able to put down on top here. As there is a couple of places where we do have rough terrain. In the meantime, I'm just going to continue up here into Clark's cave up here. And we have Clark 
uh, and all of the loot. I also have this little campfire that is using a, a balloon LED light to have a campfire. I think that looks super cool. Go ahead and check out this video if you're interested in seeing uh, that. And then you go down the stairs here into the sort of pool room where the water it can be released to flush out the heroes, which I think is a super interesting dynamic with this dungeon. And then this section here, we have the um, stairs going down here, coming back to the entrance so that heroes can be flushed down by the goblins if they choose to. And then all the miniatures on here are not representative of what's actually in the dungeon, except for Clark over here, and then some of these um, dogs or wolves. So I just put random miniatures on here just so that you can see scale. And we can move along here on this path. And then you do have the bridge that you can see uh, right over here where you can duke it out and shoot arrows at each other uh, if you're down in the gully way here while the goblins are up here on the bridge. And then you come along over here. And instead of goblins that are in this room, I did go ahead and put some kobolds. And then finally, I did put Bob the Beholder making an appearance. Obviously, he would totally crush any level one heroes at this phase, but I wanted to include him in on the dungeon. Here is the crags, um, special uh, pieces that I put down here. So overall, um, I like the interpretation of this. And then we do have this. Um, I have steps going up, but the... Here in the module, it is a steep incline of just rubble and whatnot, so it's uh, difficult to go up. So overall, uh, again, I think this looks super good, and I'm excited to be able to use it for this adventure, as well as any future adventures. I've always wanted a cavern set and didn't have an excuse to really work hard in creating one like this until now. I still have a lot of pieces left over. Um, a lot of support pieces I ended up not needing. Not Again, I don't calculate, pre-calculate everything that I need, so I just end up uh, with a lot of leftover pieces, but that will work out super well with any future builds I need to make for a cavern. So as you can tell, I'm super excited about this set. Really, really happy with this. Again, I just love Ian's tiles and the fact that the, each of the squares is an inch and a half, so it is larger, just accommodates a lot more on the board. And so super excited. And also excited about diving into the Shattered Obelisk and also continuing to use my Anchor Make M5C in order to print out all of this awesome terrain. Make sure to like and subscribe because I'm going to be producing more and more terrain for all of the modules. That's my intent for the Shattered Obelisk. Also make sure to check out my video again for the Anchor Make M5C review because I think again, one of my top recommendations for those of you who are interested in getting a 3D printer. So until next time, happy printing, happy gaming. We'll see you. This time I'm gonna shake things up and use this flat red primer from Rust-Oleum 2 Times Ultra Cover. It really is sort of a reddish brown. That's why I'm gonna use it. And typically I'm using really dark brown instead of this, but I want my caverns to look different than my other terrain. So let's try this. And I have this huge box of terrain I got all painted up. So spray paint all of that. All right, now that I got all of the red painted up, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this satin nutmeg, again from two times ultra cover Rust-Oleum. And this time I'm gonna do angled spray painting where I am just not getting everything, but just sort of angling down and not bothering getting everything. So it'll be a little bit easier to see over here. Sorry, the light is, uh, it's getting dark right now, it's dusk. And so, I still, towards the bottom, I want to keep the red. And it's only across the tops that I am painting this color. So 
sort of like that. And then I'm going to hit it from all sides. So a lot of the red is going to go, go away. You're not going to notice it too much. But it's okay for the floor to be splotchy like that. So that's what I'm going to do with all the pieces. Now that we're indoors, we can take a better look at what it looks like. So you can see that there's a lot of inconsistency with the coloring. There's still uh, quite a bit of red there, and that's okay. That's exactly the look that you're going for. You don't want it to be all consistent. There's even some fade over here. And that's sort of the look, is just a lot of the shading and the differences in color makes it look really good. And even here there's some black from the PLA that the red didn't cover. And again, that's perfectly fine. You want it to have an inconsistent look because it's just going to make uh, painting it a lot easier now. So we're going to go with the final step and I'm grabbing some burlap. This is Americana. You can get this at Hobby Lobby or Michael's uh, or your favorite craft store. It's basically a light beige. So I think Fawn is another color that they have that you can get. But any kind of sort of off-white beige color is going to work really well. And I'm using a stiff hog's hair brush, which I like to use for all of my terrain just because it um, prevents the paint from going into the crevices, which is what I is the effect that I'm going for. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, put some paint on here and I'm going to avoid getting it on to the ground and only going to be applying it to the sides and I'm going to see what that looks like because I like having the ground be a different color than the um, walls just to differentiate it a little bit. and. What I like to do with my terrain is just have sort of a fade where the top is the lightest and then down here towards the bottom um, I like to just keep it um, a little bit darker. So this is basically the effect I am going for. I might change my mind and actually do the ground. I'm going to wait and see what it looks like but so far this is super simple and you're going to be able to crank these out really fast. So to do the edges, I'm going to go ahead and use Burnt Sienna first. And I'm switching just to a regular sable brush because I actually do want this color to go down into the crevices like this. I considered actually painting the edges of the water uh, a lighter blue just because you know when you get closer to the shore you're seeing the bottom and more light is going through onto the um, into the water but uh, just for time's sake I gotta get this video out as soon as possible uh, I didn't end up doing that so I tried uh, matching the color and it didn't really work so what I did was I just spray painted onto this plate really close so that I can get a bunch of paint on there and I'm using a brush that I uh, am willing to throw away to quickly go ahead and put this uh, paint on top of this um, burnt umber. Now. Um, if you're able to match it with acrylics, I definitely go that way, but um, I tried a couple of different browns and it didn't really match. And that's why I'm going this route, just so that it matches a little bit better. Here are some of my tests, trying to use different colors. I'll paint over that once it's dry with this uh, color instead. And see how I'm keeping the edges still that um, rusty color? Uh, just because I want the edge of the water just to be a little bit different than the rest of the tile here. So working quickly because the spray paint will um, dry fairly quickly. And I don't also I don't want my brush to get all uh, hard and, and dry it on there. I did have to do a second coat of the burnt umber um, onto the main parts of this just because it um, just required it. It wasn't thick enough to go over this blue.